Batman back again, kicking off phase five. How's it feel? It feels big, it feels exciting, it's cool. It's really cool to be here. I can't believe that it's happening. It's it's really happening now, it's um, it's great. Well, one of the things that we always love about Scott Lang is that he's kind of a stand-in for us. He's our regular, everyday guy hero. So how is it like adjusting post-lift, post-Avengers Endgame? Yeah, well, it's, you know, the, Scott feels pretty good because it's, Everything's kind of in the rearview mirror now, and he can kind of live a normal life and maybe catch up on some time with his family. And Surely uh, nothing can be as bad as Thanos. That's over. That's right. I mean, my gosh. <laughs> what could be as bad as Thanos? <laughs> Try, possibly trying to get along with a teenage daughter. And how's that going? Yeah, that's a challenge. That's sometimes even more challenging than battling Thanos. Yeah, for sure. Well, I have to ask you this, because I've watched the trailer a few times, and you can tell me if I have a good read on this. Is, is Scott Lang shrinking down and actually going into his midlife crisis in this film? Is that what's going on? <laughs> I feel like he's been doing that kind of slowly but surely over the <laughs> course of the last decade. But uh, yeah, there's a bit of a, I relate to that part just a little too well. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems like it's about making up lost time and it's a big deal because everything for Scott has been about Cassie, it's been That's about right. his daughter, it's been about his family. Yeah. And she's all of a sudden 18 now. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, he, he did miss uh, out on some years, as did Cassie, and so I think that it's, it would make sense that Scott would want to try and, like, you know, spend time with this little girl who might not be as little as you know, she was the last time he got to spend some time. So, yeah, I think you're right, catching up with some lost time. And we've talked a little bit about how this movie is really kind of a family vacation movie in a way. Did you did you pick up any tips for traveling and doing family vacations together? I always believe in packing light. You know, it, if, if you can avoid uh, checking luggage, yes, do it. Um, you know, yeah, there's when you and when you, if you're going to the quantum realm, yeah, you don't want to have to carry around a big suitcase. No, because you don't know whether it's going to float away, where it's going to go. And it's not going to be that big anyway. If yeah. it's in the quantum realm, it's going to be really, really small. But uh, yeah, you don't know. There's you know certain surfaces are weird. You don't know if you're going to be able to wheel it across, yes. um, and that means carrying it. And if you got a big suitcase, it's the last thing you want to be dealing with down the, on the quantum level. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the quantum realm. This is a big, big mystery for all of us. And I know it was a very, very interesting production for you all. I mean, this is a vast dimension that does not exist. What was that like, shooting that? Well, it's a little strange at times because we're, you know, imagining it. It's We're surrounded by a blue screen. So we don't really know, and it's always exciting on nights like this when we see the movie for the first time and it's revealed, oh, that's what it looks like. <laughs> However, there were moments on this on this shoot where we were filming in something called the volume, yes, which is an LED screen all the way around an entire soundstage that projects lights and images and gives us a little bit of a sense of what it might look like. So this was the first time we were kind of thrust into this magical, weird world and had an idea of what it kind of looked like. And it helped filming those scenes because you really feel as if, you know, you have something to react there. against. Whereas imagine in the, in the first and second one, you were very much yeah. like, yeah. okay, man, it's tardigrades and weird spores. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and not just a, you know, a green tape mark. Right actually having something real to react to. It's nice, it really does help, it really does. I feel like these have gotten bigger and bigger as Scott has become more and more of a hero. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of like the scale of this one compared to the other ones? Well this one, yeah, this one felt uh, a bit different yeah. than the first two. Uh, as much as, gosh, I think we all loved working on the first two and loved our place and, and kind of these, you know, familial themes. And we got to do all of that in this one, but it felt like Oh yeah, this is phase five. This is rolling out something very big uh, with some really big storylines, some really big characters, and um, and so it felt uh, it felt a, it was exciting. It felt different. It felt bigger. But well, we are so excited for phase five and what this movie is kicking off. There are a lot of people here who want to talk to you, so we got to send you on your way. But if you want to quickly say something to the fans before yeah. we go, they're All watching. Right. Live. Oh, I guess I guess all you Marvel fans, I hope you like this movie. I uh, see it in a theater. You want to get that full immersive experience? And um, we're, I'm, just, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to meet all these people who are boy, sweating it out in costumes. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you so much. Thank all right, so everybody. All right.